here present. Um, and uh, uh, without uh, further delays, uh, welcome uh, the, um, the guests to jo join us on stage. I would like to start with uh, um, the FIFA representative, FIFA professional football advisor, uh, Jose Andres Portabella. Please. Here? Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, we have Pavel Luzanov from the Asian Football Confederation, Head of Competitions Strategy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, we have Christian Tonelli from uh, CONCACAF. We have also Giulio Laratro. Welcome from Comenbol. Welcome. And next we have Stephen Dillon from Oceania Football uh, Confederation, OFC. Welcome. And finally, we have uh, David Negre from UEFA. Okay, welcome everyone again to this uh, club licensing uh, roundtable uh, session. Uh, we are very glad to, to have you today. And uh, um, yes, it's an important platform uh, for us uh, as CAF, as Africa. It's uh, the second time we are engaging in this, um, in this uh, form of communication. Uh, if you recall, uh, uh, last, uh, last year, uh, due to the pandemic, obviously, uh, we tried to, to also have a similar platform and we've, uh, we, we could say success successfully were able to do it via, via Zoom. Uh, since our, our workshop uh, last year was also through Zoom and uh, uh, definitely this year it's a great pleasure to welcome you here in Cairo. Uh, I know some of you had a very long uh, uh, trip to be here uh, and uh, jet lags and uh, it's normal when we go also to your part of the continent we also have these challenges but very 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 glad to to have you to have you here so um, uh, before I forget a uh, warm welcome also to the uh, viewers um, and the users around the globe that are following us uh, from the different CAF platforms. Uh, and uh, we hope that you can uh, enjoy this uh, uh, session um, as much as uh, the participants here um, uh, on site. Um, so I would like to, to, to initiate with a very um, uh, general um, approach uh, with regards to club licensing around the globe. I mean, we, are, uh, we have FIFA on one hand that uh, sets the legal framework for implementation of club licensing, which has, done, which has been uh, for quite a year already in, in, in implementation. And then it was up to each of our uh, co six uh, football confederations then to um, um, cascade this regulatory framework and to uh, uh, adapt it to our um, uh, continental landscape. So, um, first of all, I would like to start, obviously, with, uh, with FIFA um, to tell us a bit of the beginnings of, uh, of, of the framework, uh, way, how did it start, and, um, and uh, um, the, the, the pathway that uh, club licensing has taken until the days today. Andres, please. Excellent. So, uh, how long do you have? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, just kidding. So first of all, thank you, Sidat. Thank you, CAF, for, for hosting this excellent panel. What a, what a real honor to be uh, among such distinguished individuals uh, who are doing a phenomenal job around the world uh, in making club licensing really a reality in every corner uh, of the globe. So thank you for hosting this platform. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, and uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be with you all. So. So FIFA's club licensing program actually starts in 2007, but it takes inspiration from the great work done by UEFA. And even prior to UEFA, in the Netherlands, in Austria, in Germany, the club licensing system had already been in place for many years. So UEFA takes a great idea from three of their members, 
FIFA says, wow, what a great idea, and incorporates a, a, a global framework for the club licensing system. So a system that is born with three member associations that is taken on by one confederation, and the FIFA incorporates it and says, invites every confederation around the world in 2007, 2008 to establish a club license system in each one of the regions. So for the first time ever, FIFA publishes a set of club licensing regulations in 2007 that is mandated to each one of the confederations to implement at the global level. So to my left, we have an incredible work that, that Pavel and the team at AFC have done since 2009, which I'll let him, of course, speak more in detail about. And then progressively, of course, the work that uh, CAF has done already, as you said, uh, it's been over a decade since you first implemented your first set of club licensing regulations. And then followed by Christian, the great team in, in CONCACAF, who has been uh, implementing the system to its own reality in the CONCACAF region. Uh, so I always like to say, of course, that sometimes being towards the end of an implementation has great advantages. And OFC and Comebol have been implementing it in the last couple of years with the full advantage of knowing what advantages and what challenges the other confederations had. So now at FIFA, we're very happy because we have the system as a reality across the globe. Each one of the federations, pretty much the large majority of federations around the world are implementing a club licensing system. And moving forward, we have also a great uh, opportunity to implement it on the women's football side. So we're taking great strides at FIFA to invest in that space as well. Uh, with a specific program to that, uh, to that initiative, and hopefully we will continue to see the club license system becoming even stronger uh, in the future. Perfect, uh, perfect e explanation in terms of the, the landscape of, uh, of each confederation. Uh, I wanted to, to, to jump to, to UEFA because uh, we've heard uh, Andres saying very well that the system has kick-started from the member associations in UEFA. It was not even from a confederation level. It was Netherlands and uh, uh, Germany. Um, so um, to give us a bit of uh, what was also the pathway from the UEFA perspective, because uh, naturally we see that UEFA, in terms of the implementation of club licensing, it's, uh, has uh, progressed very well. And today, not only club licensing is done, but also you are already uh, doing the financial uh, fair play. Uh, in, you have integrated that. So to give us a bit of the um, process that UEFA has taken these big steps into uh, making the, licensing, uh, the club licensing process solid. Thank you, Sidat. And uh, firstly, let, let me start uh, thanking you and Kath for the invite. It is a privilege to be part of this uh, club licensing seminar and also to congratulate you for the regulations that you just approved. There is a lot of work behind the end product that you presented yesterday, so congratulations for this big milestone uh, to CAF. Back to your question, um, it is important to be aware that the UEFA club licensing system currently applies to four club competitions. On the one hand, we have the UEFA club licensing regulations for the UEFA Women's Champions League, applicable to the UEFA Women's Champions League. And on the other hand, we have the UEFA club licensing and financial sustainability regulations that apply to the UEFA Champions League, the Europa League, and the Conference League. The journey in order to get to this point was long and we have to go all the way back to 1999. That's when the first conversations with the stakeholders started, when the first discussions on club licensing started. And in 2002, it was the year when after a pilot project with eight national associations, the first club licensing regulations, actually it was a club licensing manual was approved. So it's a system that has been implemented for 20 years and oh. I would like to highlight three main milestones. In 2020, uh, 2010, the financial fair play regulations were 
for the first time integrated into the club licensing regulations. As a second milestone in 2018, club licensing criteria applicable to the UEFA Women's Champions League were, the f were for the first time approved and integrated in the club licensing regulations. And third, as a third milestone, earlier this year, the UF Executive Committee approved the new club licensing uh, regulations. On the one hand, the UF club licensing regulations for the UF Women's Champions League, being the first time that UEFA has a, a standalone set of regulations applicable for this competition, for the Women's Champions League, and also the UEFA Executive Committee approved the new and enhanced club licensing regulations, the UEFA club licensing and financial sustainability regulations, not financial fair play anymore. The, the name has been updated. And that's the context that we have at the moment. As I said, it's a journey that started 20 years ago with many challenges, but uh, this journey is the one that uh, allowed us to be where, where we are today. It's, uh, it's interesting to notice that uh, just recently, as uh, David mentioned, UEFA updated their, their regulations. I believe it was a couple of weeks or month, not even more than a month ago that uh, the UEFA also um, updated the regulations. And uh, today they have a dedicated uh, CAF, uh, sorry, the dedicated UEFA uh, club licensing regulations, as, as same as, as we've done. And uh, I think we've done a good job. Uh, we've approved our regulations also in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in very recently and uh, to keep up with the trends from the other, other confederations. Uh, Christian uh, uh, from CONCACAF, um, uh, on, on, your, on your perspective, on your confederation landscape, um, uh, because CONCACAF also, we've, uh, we've had many interactions, many exchanges, uh, CAF, CONCACAF, and um, uh, you also have a, a very similar, um, uh, let's say, similar challenges and opportunities uh, as CAF. Uh, big number of uh, associations, um, different contexts, different languages, uh, uh, travel issues, uh, same as uh, in Africa. So we kind of have several similarities um, to like the AFC also. So I wanted to, for you to tell us a bit of, um, of the start of the, the, the system and what, what has been the, the greatest barriers that you that CONCACAF has faced and uh, and to give us an update of where the system stands today. Thank you, Sadat. Great pleasure to be here. I would like to thank CAF for organizing this conference, all the member associations present. It's my first time in Africa, so very hmm. excited to be here and uh, represent CONCACAF mm -hmm. and see for the first time a lot of our fellow colleagues from other confederations, FIFA. Um, in regards to what you're mentioning, it's very true. You know, we, we work with countries all the way from 5,000 people in population to mm. over 300 million. So wow. it's mm. a very big range in, in what we can do in terms of club licensing. We really try to adapt the regulations in a sense that it's a minimum level enough <coughs> so that Federations can participate, clubs can participate, but also that we are not jeopardizing the, the level of our competition of, of domestic leagues. So I would say our biggest barrier, barriers are very similar to what other confederations had in the beginning. I think member associations, clubs saw it as a form of exclusion, perhaps a form of requirements that were set upon them to prevent them from competing. But all the same, through all the education, through all the workshops we've had with our member associations, we've, we've helped them understand that it's really just a way of us measuring where we are and where we want to be. How do we know where we are going to go if we are not aware of our current situation, of what our clubs can do, what we can do administratively, sportingly? So I think, I think that's one of the biggest barrier, barriers, just the mindset, trying to adjust that Make it, make it seem as a development tool because that it really is what it is. If you want to align your, development, align your development strategy to 
youth, youth football, youth clubs to maybe think for, for the future, longer term, set certain requirements on the, on the sporting side to have a minimum number of teams, certified personnel, working with those youth teams. So just understanding the reality, seeing how we can work with our member associations, get them all the support that is necessary. I'm very happy to see all the work being done with them. All the support that is necessary. I'm very happy to see all the work being done with the platform. I know it's one of the next, next few questions, but CONCACAF is also working with Analyticum on our platform, and it's, it's been a, prog a process, but it's interesting to see the, the feedback. But I just want to encourage everybody to keep working on it. It is a great tool, and it will really serve to facilitate the process, improve the transparency and licensing clubs, and moving forward in the long run. Okay. So can, by, by your reply, uh, Christian, can we actually say that club licensing is an effective tool for football development and long-term professionalization of, of, of clubs and competitions? Most definitely. Most definitely uh, we've seen some, some great strides, at least from our side in, in the Confederation. For example, I'm, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of... Hello? I'm not sure if everybody's aware of the under-20 championship that CONCACAF just had, but one example that resonates is Dominican Republic making it to the finals. Uh, a few years back, hello? A few years back, we were working strictly with them on developing youth, youth team criteria to make sure that they strengthened the foundation of their clubs and they had future talent to, to pick from. And we included, you know, certain youth teams as a requirement, under 17 being one of them, and their under 20 team just made it to the finals against USA, you know, where the likes of Mexico and other member associations didn't potentially make it that far. It's a very big feat, especially considering the, the size of, of Dominican Republic in comparison to those other member associations, as well as Guatemala making it to the top, top four countries. So we've seen that the member associations that are really taking club licensing seriously, putting the right steps in place, working with the clubs, are really seeing, reaping the benefits down the, down the line. Okay. Let's travel to South America now. Uh, Julio, uh, we have here today with us uh, the club licensing managers, uh, key um, central and key figure in this uh, entire uh, club licensing system. Uh, so, uh, my question to you is simple. Uh, how important is the role of the club licensing managers uh, in the success of the system? That's, that's a simple question and you have, uh, you have been on both sides and uh, uh, today you are at the confederation level so I think you could uh, expand on that and uh, take the time that you need because uh, we do have the 54 club licensing managers here and uh, I think it's important that um, uh, at the end of your explanation, not, not trying to pressure you on your reply, but they do really um, interiorize and understand how key they are for, for the success of, uh, of uh, the system in their domestic um, uh, landscape. Okay. Well, first of all, thanks, CAF, for the invitation. It's a great seminar, Ciudad. Thank you for the invitation. Pleasure to share the, the round table with people so important. Known and this for almost five years since I got into Cornwall. And back to the question, simple. We have a regulation, which I would like to call another regulation, but a tool. We need to understand that the regulation for the club licensing is a tool, a tool to make football grow. And we managers, as managers, have to have that responsibility or the to, to, to understand that it's not a regulation, it's a tool. We need to make that tool work for us and make sure that everybody understands that. Not that we have to give you the balance sheet or that we have to give you the contract. It's all steps to make football grow, and we need to understand that. And some, some clubs don't like that. In South America, for example, clubs are small, so they want to manage clubs as, as a small business. And football has grown so much that we need to take those steps. Those steps mean make it a, a big, like a big uh, enterprise with CEOs, with, with managers, with, with people taking care of accountability, 
with the coaches being coaches. And all those steps we take, the only thing that's going to take us is to make football keep on growing. And the other thing that I like about licensing is that I think sports is not only about making money, but to form people. And also, in having youth, we, we are forming better people for, our, for, for the world. I mean, we need sports, and we need to understand that sports is not only making money, but to form people. And I think those things are very important that we understand in order to make sure that club licensing is a tool, a way to, a way to get to somewhere and not add in, how do we say, something that I impose to you guys. It's a tool. That's what I think about is club licensing. Uh, Steven uh, from Oceania Football uh, Confederation. Uh, Oceania is, uh, has uh, how many uh, member associations, Steven? Uh, 11. 11. So it's the smallest in number. Uh, no, 10. 10, exactly. Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> um, so, um, so maybe it's, there's a competition there you know, to get one more member association. But anyways, um, <laughs> Stephen, in terms of, uh, because Oceania also has many pecu peculiarities, which we've spoken about it before, and uh, we know that uh, at your confederation, um, there are strives now to, to accelerate, let's say, the, the process uh, of implementation. Uh, and I know we've been talking even of uh, possibilities of uh, online platforms and, and things like that, which shows that uh, all of us today uh, the online platform is, is, a, is a tool that uh, uh, needs to be in place, you know. So uh, just to also give us an update on the current status of Oceania football and the licensing, licensing on, on that part of the continent. Uh, of, of course, um, first of all, uh, kia ora and Terakota Katoa. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for Oceania football to be here. Uh, such a prestigious event. And uh, we're certainly very appreciative of the ability to exchange and uh, listen to your people, and also for me to be a, a voice of the people of the Pacific. Um, our people are very ambitious, and we are very uh, proud of football in our region. Um, we have uh, high, high expectations of where we want to be uh, in the future. But I think it's important to start by saying that the context of, that we work in within Oceania football is a 99% uh, amateur sporting environment. So we have one professional team, who are the Wellington Phoenix, who are based in New Zealand, and they play in the AFC competition uh, of the A-League men. So everybody else, uh, our member associations and associate members, uh, are amateur in status. Uh, that isn't an excuse, and is actually a, a strength that, that we do have, and the ability for our people to uh, change and adapt and, and mould. And our stance on club licensing is more based around uh, developing people and using club licensing as a guide to help us as a confederation uh, help uh, and assist uh, our people in areas that they need assistance. So in terms of our approach to club licensing, uh, it is one of uh, people development, uh, capacity building, uh, capability building, and growing uh, not only Oceania football, but football across uh, the Pacific region. Um, in terms of some of the strides that we have made uh, in recent years, uh, club licensing has been around in various forms in Oceania football uh, since uh, the, the inception. And many of our member associations uh, take uh, aspects of club licensing and use them to work with their clubs and use them to work uh, on capacity building within each of their areas. Uh, we do have some shining lights. We do have a number of member associations who do have club licensing in men's football, in women's football, also includes youth football as well. Um, we also then have a number of other associations who um, utilize aspects of club licensing regulations, but within their competition regulations. So they're able to merge, uh, merge the two alone. So as I say, we are um, very ambitious people. Um, each one of our member associations uh, wants to uh, pursue club licensing uh, in more detail and certainly our role as a confederation is to be there to help support uh, through not only guidance, uh, advice, development programs uh, but also acting uh, as a, a source of comfort and inspiration 
to help them as well. So mm -hmm. we are, um, yeah, we're really inspired by the work that's taken place here and some of the, the aspects you've been talking about today. Uh, and I certainly know that some of the stories that your people will be able to share will be equally as applicable to uh, countries in our region also. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We travel to Asia now. Uh, Pavel uh, from the Asian Football Confederation. And I have a special question for you. I, I on purpose, uh, went on the, the round table, but because I have a special uh, 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 question, and uh, I think your, um, your view on that, your view meaning as from the AFC, it's important for the participants here. It's uh, um, in Africa, uh, for example, it's, uh, it's common uh, that certain football stakeholders um, tend to see club licensing purely as an infrastructure development tool, okay? So, what would, what would your reply be to that, based on your, your experience? Because the AFC, uh, it's, it's the, the, the implementation of club licensing system is on all levels. Uh, so, I wanted you to expand a bit on uh, what would be your, your, your reply to that and what would be your advice and uh, giving us, obviously, uh, a bit of the, um, the status quo of uh, licensing at, uh, at, at in Asia. Okay, so good morning again, everyone in this room. Thank you, Sudat. Thank you, Taf. Thank you, Africa, for hosting us here. That's what many colleagues mentioned. This is a, one of the first, if not first, for all of us visit to, to Cairo, to Africa. And yeah, from the first attempt to, to arrive here, to this is very well welcome. Thank you for organizing this. Uh, going back to your question, yes, uh, in AFC we implement this uh, more than 10 years, the club licensing uh, process and uh, infrastructure is just the one, uh, not of course small, but one of the important tool of uh, how we treat the club licensing process. Uh, and for infrastructure, what I want to say, it's not always all the clubs, they own their own stadiums or the training uh, facilities, right? So for in, from infrastructure point of view, it's a, a development tool, as what uh, Julio mentioned just now, also the nice tool to develop, nice tool to follow uh, all the recommendations by the Confederation uh, to look at the regulations, uh, to treat this as, a, I would say, the checklist to, to bring all your uh, necessary uh, items of the club structure. To, to the highest level, to, to develop, to, to make their club uh, and the league also sustain, to, to make it strong as a, from the organization point of view, financial, like many other things like technical coaching development. But from infrastructure, yes, it's like, uh, of course, you need to work on together with the, some, most of the times it's uh, government authorities who are on the, the infrastructure, the stadiums in uh, Asian c c circumstances, right? To, to bring the to the next level to, to make this uh, regulation uh, regulations apply for all your uh, stadiums and other infrastructure because um, looking at the I think uh, Sidat you mentioned in one of your presentations from the day one uh, in your previous regulations you had a lot of uh, criteria for which you supposed to be applied for this stadium right but uh, now it's just one line maybe in your regulation same for us so whatever stadium uh, the clubs need to use for uh, their own purposes, especially the play in uh, our international competitions. It's just to need uh, to be meeting the requirements of the AFC stadium regulations. So it's, quite, it's just a, one line or maybe just a few lines in the regulations, mm -hmm. but this is a lot of work being done behind the scenes to, to, to mm -hmm. bring to this uh, to another level. So uh, the, by doing this, we bring the uh, the spotlights to the uh, stadium regulations, uh, which sometimes also very difficult to meet, but in the end of the day, uh, the fans who are coming to the stadium, the, your players, once they come to the stadium, once they see the, uh, how good this uh, facility prepared for them, I think they will perform even better. The fans, they will also feel there is, that they need it here in this stadium. This is something like their home in most of the matches, right? So. They also will behave, I think, they, they perform well, you know, they don't like do any unnecessary things, but they just support the team to wish them the, the best of their luck and then uh, they will leave the stadium with respect despite of the uh, result of the, their team will obtain, right? 
So this is what, how we treat. Did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah. I want to take you back because you've said something uh, very important. It's not only infrastructure. So I wanted to take you back there f for you to, to take us through how has AFC, because AFC has uh, implemented or makes it mandatory that all other requirements, sporting, uh, personnel, legal, uh, uh, administrative, uh, uh, you know, all of these requirements clubs must meet. So uh, if you could elaborate how has this uh, been, um, because it's been very important for the AFC, and to share with the club licensing managers and the, and the different stakeholders that are following us, um, that club licensing is a broad tool that it encompasses not only infrastructure, but this for other other criteria. So I wanted you to expand on this part that not only infrastructure, but the other, the other areas also. Yeah, very true, see that what you said just now, like, uh, in our vision, our understanding, we don't want to see the, uh, the clubs, just a team of 11 players playing on the pitch, uh, you know, for this particular day. We want the club structure to support, to develop the football in, in the region, in their society, probably where the, this club is based, to, to, to give them the right tool to express themselves to the fans, to, to, to feel engaged to the club, not just, like I said, as a team uh, in, in the past, like it was, like... Uh, so, but the clubs normally it's uh, they're based on the local society, on the they're based on uh, big uh, corporations or ministries, right? Some. So this is what we want really to, to clubs being uh, close to their uh, fans uh, to to develop not only from the technical point of view, but from many different angles to to uh, to make the club like a history in the club, to make the, the value in the club, to make this. Um, uh, the sense of the club existence, you know, this is what I think through the club licensing, I think it's, it's, uh, it was not easy also for us, like some of my colleagues mentioned just now, to deliver this message to the, to the clubs, to explain them, guys, this is something for you to, to, to develop. If you do this, it's not, does not mean it's, uh, this is prohibit them if you don't, for example, meet the requirements. It's not to prohibit them for part participation in our competitions or domestic competitions. This is something for you to just go through the process and feel proud of what you have done. And, of course, you can come back to your fans, to, to your, like, stakeholders, right, and say, yes, we are established, we are well, very well, like, prepared to, 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 to meet your needs. And then this is from where I think they can get more attention from the sponsorships, from the, the other supporters, you know, and just to get the, Thank you. Uh, something like, like I said, sense in the club, you know, just existence. This is Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've uh, just concluded the first... Uh, topic of, uh, of, our, of our conversation, of our end table. I think before we proceed to the next point, it's important that uh, we take some um, key t takeaways uh, that uh, club licensing is a global system. Club licensing is not a regional system, is not a continental system, it's a global system that is implemented all over the globe. Um, obviously uh, implemented at different stages with different phases and always adapted to the landscape and the reality and the context of each uh, confederation in this case. We've also heard um, that uh, uh, club licensing uh, is not only um, an infrastructure development tool, but a tool to develop the clubs, a tool to develop the leagues from a more holistic perspective, for more from uh, different uh, levels in terms of the um, management of the club, structure, infrastructure, uh, financial, uh, legal, etc. Uh, we've ho also um, had comments in terms of the role of the club licensing managers, the role that you play as the central uh, point in the member association to uh, really implement the strategy, the, 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 the system, and finally, a uh, very important comment from Pravel when he says that club licensing is not an exclu exclusion tool. Club licensing actually, on the other hand, if we want to say it, it's an inclusion tool, but inclusion of the best, inclusion of the organized, inclusion of clubs with minimum structure, because at the end, it's all about the product. At the end, it's all about uh, the competition, because we want to... Uh, have uh, attract more sponsors, we want to have more fans, we want to have um, 
uh, the, our football competitions to be better and better. And that you can only do uh, if your clubs are really structured. So thank you very much for, for this uh, uh, first part of introduction on club licensing around the globe. Um, the next point uh, is uh, one of the trendy topics at, uh, at CAF in Africa. We have just launched uh, yesterday uh, our CAF club licensing online platform, uh, which um, um, we've had uh, already two sessions um, yesterday and today, uh, the first introduction, uh, introductory sessions. And uh, I wanted to bring Andres from FIFA uh, to give us um, a bit of uh, context in terms of uh, how FIFA views um, um, the implementation of these types of systems nowadays. Because um, up till uh, um, recent times, uh, several of our confederations or even CAF, uh, for example, we are still doing the, the procedure completely manually. So papers, uh, files, uh, we have, um, we have uh, offices full of uh, documents from clubs and etc. and decisions. So transitioning to this um, system, electronic system, it's definitely a great step. Uh, so from FIFA perspective, how do you view this and uh, some comments on it? Excellent question, Sidat. I think the implementation of your online platform is going to be a game changer for club licensing in Africa. So for all of you, for all of your clubs, to have one centralized location where the entire system lives, breathes, is active, is going to be a complete great game changer for you all. So moving forward, you know, it will be, uh, Christian has mentioned already, it's going to be a a phase of getting to know this new platform. Once you get to know it, you have to teach it to your clubs. And of course, that's not going to be easy. But once everybody is familiar with what button to click, how to uh, merge information, how to do uh, a, a complete uh, process within the platform, all of you are going to be so happy. Because you won't be receiving faxes. You won't be receiving emails. You won't be receiving uh, posted letters. Mm -hmm you will have everything in one single location. So this will be a complete game changer. And another thing that I really wanted to highlight from the process that you have done at, at, at CAF is how you got here, how you got to today. Because it's very important to notice that CAF did a complete RFP to get to your provider for your club licensing online platform. And it's very important to notice this because there's a complete change at CAF. And I think not only with club licensing, but all the work that your administration is doing is really bringing your organization to another level. So I would like to congratulate you for getting to today, but I also want to congratulate you for how you got to today. So a really big congratulations from FIFA. Uh, and I think for other confederations, it's been a complete game changer. So many federations are still doing the, the process via email, and it's completely fine, but it's a little bit inefficient. So you will see a complete ch change at the, at the confederation and federation level with your new system. So please be patient. I know it's a very tedious moment to get to know a new platform, to get to know how to use it. But once you'll be able to really know where everything is, how to do everything, you'll be in a completely much better place. Uh, and I think CAF will be there to support you every step of the day, uh, every step of the way. And I think the, the people from the platform will also be available to you to ensure that you know how to use this thing. Well, after, after your comments, I see um, some more calm uh, uh, faces. I was, when we had the sessions, uh, people were a bit uh, anxious uh, because transitioning from uh, the, status, the current status quo to a fully electronic uh, system, it is a challenge, but it is the duty of CAF. Let's put it that way, it's, it is the duty of CAF to ensure that the, the, all the national associations are well trained into the system and that's the plan of CAF for the coming period uh, to ensure that, uh, that uh, passage of uh, know-how um, to, the, to the different member associations and following that we can also work in, with the clubs uh, because they will also be uh, the, dif the different users in, the, in, in, in this platform. Christian, um, CONCACAF, uh, 
We have the same uh, provider. We have the same platform um, of uh, the club licensing online platform. It's the same, which um, brings us uh, to a fantastic opportunity of cooperation uh, between our confederations, between our member associations, using the same platform, the same interface, the same framework. Um, and uh, I think from, uh, from a partnership perspective, I think that's something that we, we, can, we should and we, we, we should work on. Um, so I would like you, on a second note, to give us a comment on this, but on first note, because we share this platform, um, identical platform, to transmit a bit of uh, how the implementation w went on from the beginning, uh, because I'm sure yeah. the session that you've, uh, you've, um, you've accompanied yesterday, you, maybe it brought you some memories. Yeah. Uh, wow, I remember this when the first time we were doing with the member associations, because Christian had the same session with the same provider, going through the same steps. And maybe Christian was saying, oh, they still, you know, they have a long way, uh, you know. So take us through this, uh, take your time to explain and to, to share this, uh, this, this view from, from, from CONCACAF side. Sure. It was a sunny day in Panama in 2019. <laughs> no, really, uh, I think, first off, to touch on that, it's a great benefit having the same, the same platform using very, very similar modules, if not identical. I think the benefit of Analyticum and the services that they offer is that once a confederation implements something that sees a positive result, other confederations can easily adapt to that and bring in the best practices from around the region because I know there's several, several confederations up here that are using the platform, maybe not fully for club licensing, but I know it is in the works. So I think in the beginning, like, like Siddad said, this, this session brought back a lot of memories because we have 41 member associations. We have four different official languages. So it's a lot of trying to communicate, trying to explain properly how to use the platform. At the beginning, it's, it's always going to be a challenge. Change, change is never comfortable for anybody, but I think it, it's a little corny, but with big risk comes big rewards. So if, if we really take this platform take this initiative seriously, work with the clubs. I think the work with the clubs is instrumental to this. We have to make sure as club licensing managers, as club licensing administrators, on behalf of CAF, that we are working together, cooperating, training, providing all the supporting documents that are necessary, creating the manuals if, if, if needed, you know, and that's something that we can definitely collaborate on because I think it's, like we mentioned, it's the same platform, it's very similar function, functionality, so the training is, is always instrumental, but year to year we have to make sure we're brushing up on things that maybe have been creating issues for the clubs. At, at the end, the, the member associations, you here, are working on this platform 24-7 really. So it's also useful for you to bring back your feedback to CAF. If you see something that could improve, you see certain things that maybe you think could be done a, a, a different way, I think... The, the communication, the collaboration between confederation member associations is always instrumental to continue to improve the, the platform. And I know since we started with Analyticum, there's been things that we've tried to, to work on because we saw it in a, maybe in a different vision. But overall, the experience has been great. It is, it is a big commitment, from, not just from our side, but from the member association's point of view. We have several member associations doing it in the first division, second division, third division, some even went as far as going to youth clubs. So it, it really can go as far as, as you want. And I think maybe connecting a little bit more before to the role of the club licensing manager, I think as part of the federation, you, you have an idea already of what the strategy at the member association is. And I think it's your role to work on the club licensing regulations to adapt that so that we can mirror that vision on what the, the work that the clubs are doing to assure that we are all going towards the same direction. I think that's very useful in making sure that we're successful in implementing the system and ultimately in seeing the best results possible at the, at the Federation. Okay. Uh, Pavel, uh, the AFC is one of the confederations that obviously has a different developer in terms of the, the system. Um, 
we know that the system is very efficient. We've, uh, we've seen it before, um, and we know the history of the, of the platform itself. Um, could, you take, could you give us some advice on how to approach the launching phase of a new, club, a new platform, you know, uh, taking the, considering the, the, the experience that the AFC has had and uh, the platform today, uh, following various years in the AFC, it's not in, into discussion. It's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's not a topic today. They, if we are implementing or not at the AFC. Today at the AFC, the implementation of the, of the online platform, it's a... Uh, it's, it's, it goes without saying, let's, let's use that, that phrase. So uh, just to take us through uh, which, would be, uh, which have been the main steps that uh, the AFC has taken when they launched the platform, how did they um, ensure that the platform was effectively uh, cascaded uh, to the uh, users and to the member associations? Thank you for highlighting this, uh, Sidat, yes. Uh, our system, uh, we call it CLAS, Club Licensing and Administration System, was established quite uh, many years ago. Uh, and now we have full uh, archive of the clubs which participated in our competitions and the club licensing also for the last five years. So at first in the beginning it was in the te testing uh, mode and then we moved to uh, the full uh, implementation for the club licensing and now it's just... Uh, uh, the tool, like what you correctly mentioned, is just something automatically works in, uh, in, in, in AFC for our clubs to upload their, all the necessary documentations, all their uh, information into the system, and just to get simple click from, uh, from the approval, like a, a approving authority to either reject the license or uh, approve the license. So just. Uh, how we reach there is, uh, I think, because we uh, work together with our stakeholders, with our member associations, with the clubs. So it's not just simply uh, mirroring the replication of the club licensing regulations, but also the uh, feedback from the uh, club licensing managers, like the audience we have as of today in, in this very room, right? To, to understand their need, to understand their... Uh, the easy way for them to, to work on, because in the end of the day, the main stakeholders with the clubs and the club licensing managers who will be working from the uh, another end, I mean from the CAF uh, point of view, right? So I think uh, the system also, in, I believe also it was a few rounds of, as what yesterday your colleagues explained, few rounds of uh, uh, like uh, making the system more convenient for the clubs, right? To, 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 to make a betterment of the system. Um, so yes, I think the, the key for me is just to, to listen to, to the stakeholders and to, to, to give them what they want, actually. Because now, even to arrive here in Cairo, right, everything was done about online. Like our tickets, <laughs> uh, the payment for the tickets, uh, I don't know, what, uh, hotel accommodation, <laughs> all the payments now in online. I don't know even how the local currency look like. And <laughs> but it's, it's, everything is already arranged, right, without even going to these details. I think same will be in the, for, uh, for the U.S. system. Everything will be done from the backside by the clubs and the uh, club licensing managers, which are supposed to be, like what you correctly mentioned, are really multitasking people. And this is a, not a pressure on their shoulder. This is the <laughs> pleasure of having them of this kind of uh, um, right people, I would say, in the right place. So, yes, I think it's this, uh, the, the key of the success in the hands of the clubs and the club licensing managers in the end. So we do the system for them. I think this is a, this is a key message uh, everyone needs to understand. And if they have any comments, any uh, suggestions for the betterment of the system, I think, I believe CAF is also open it's to listen and uh, adopt, accommodate, right? If, yeah. if it is, doesn't go against the regulations, it's just about the operation of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a very important point that Pavel has mentioned. I personally have been to, the, to one of uh, these seminars at the AFC back in 2017, uh, and... Uh, in a similar session of uh, training, obviously at that time they were just uh, training on uh, updates. It was not the first kickoff of the system. And what I've noticed is that the club licensing managers, at any point they could 
request the, 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 the floor to make contributions to a system that has been in place. So maybe throughout their work, throughout the, the process they have been following, they found that maybe this could work better. Maybe that instead of the system working on this way, they could um, amend it and in include another function. So that is the way that we want also to take it. As Pavel said, as long as it does not conflict with or contradict with the regulations, uh, is uh, uh, issues or, or contributions that can um, improve the, the, the framework, we will be ready uh, to accommodate that um, at, uh, at, uh, at when we are in advanced uh, stages of training. Uh, that's something that we will be very happy to accommodate because from our side, from CAF side, we are also at a phase that it's a learning phase for CAF also because we will also, to we will also need to adapt ourselves into this uh, into this into this uh, uh, platform, um, we travel to to UEFA to 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 Europe uh, because UEFA has a different uh, has a different setup. Uh, UEFA does not have a an internal online platform, but it's not because uh, it's not a necessary tool, or it's a, it's not because it's an irrelevant tool. Uh, David will explain why in. Uh, um, it's uh, also um, related to the member associations uh, and the, how the, the system has been implemented for, for a long time. So, David, if you could take us through um, uh, the, how the system is implemented in, in UEFA with, uh, from an online perspective, um, and it's not from a UEFA online club licensing system, but from the member associations. As you say, we follow a different approach, and that's because of different historical reasons. I think it has been said in previous uh, seminars and conferences, there is not a right or wrong approach. It all depends on the local context and what suits the best for each confederation. In our case, we do have an online platform, and essentially is where our licensors submit to us the licensing decisions. So in the end of the licensing process, each of the licensors indicate to UEFA what license applicants have been granted with the license and which ones haven't been granted with the license. Um, this means that in parallel, each of the licensors have their own online platform Correct. in order to operate their domestic club licensing Correct. system. So that's a different approach to the one that some of the confederations are taking. The reason that motivates this approach, as I said, there are various. For example, um, one is due to historical reasons. When UEFA first launched the platform some years ago, some of the licensors already right. had the platform in place. Therefore, it was considered that the most convenient approach was to continue allowing them to operate their own platform and therefore to find a different approach. Another uh, reason is the big diversity that we have within UEFA. We have 55 national associations uh, with different legal frameworks, also different languages, and uh, it was deemed that the most appropriate approach was to have just one centralized platform where the license source will submit the decisions, but then to allow this freedom, to give this freedom at national level in order to operate the system. Again, as I was saying in the beginning, I don't think there is a right or wrong approach. Actually, the right approach is the one that adapts to the local context. So then it makes totally sense that different confederations, based on their own needs, have a different approach. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think it's, it's important what, uh, what David is saying in terms of the uh, there's no right and wrong in, 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 in the implementation of the system. And uh, specifically on the online platform, uh, while several of our confederations uh, were the ones to introduce the club licensing system in, in the continent, in UEFA, uh, we had, it was the other way around. You had member associations that have introduced the system uh, uh, beforehand, 
So um, UEFA decided, and, and the, the, the UA, several of the UEFA member associations do have already a, an online platform um, to operate their licensing system. So they found it um, that it would not, it would maybe uh, collide uh, to to bring in a platform from from UEFA level. But I'm also um, I'm aware that UEFA has other platforms that complement uh, the licensing the licensing uh, platforms, such as the spot checks, for example. Um, you could take us through that and the quality standard uh, platform also. Exactly. Perhaps it's worth starting with the last one, the club licensing quality standard, also taking into consideration that yesterday you presented uh, your first one, um, the one for, for CAF. Um, in our case at UEFA, we also have a, a club licensing quality standard that basically states the minimum requirements that each of the licensors have to have in place in order to operate the club licensing system. So as Sidat said, uh, it's not an audit or a process that the clubs have to follow, but the processes that the licensors <coughs> have to follow in order to operate the system. That's very relevant in our case because one of the principles of the UEFA club licensing system is the principle of sub subsidiarity, which, me which means that each of the licensors, um, either the national associations or the affiliated leagues, leagues act as decision-making bodies. So to make sure that they have the right processes in place in order to run the club licensing system is paramount for the credibility of the UEFA club licensing system. So all of this process is audited through an online platform, as you were mentioning, Sidat, uh, where the auditors that visit the licensors indicate whether each of the national associations met all the requirements as stated in the club licensing quality standards. So this tool is very important as well to safeguard the credibility and reputation of the UEFA club licensing system. So this is our next step, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is what now we have to strive for, is to have a system that we can check the licenses, we can check the member associations, because now we do have a book, we do have a regulation, the quality standard document that was launched uh, yesterday, um, to ensure that the member associations are implementing um, properly the club licensing system. So the next step, uh, that's a good challenge for us, uh, David, for us to look into, uh, for CAF to look into the possibility in the, in the coming years, to have a dedicated uh, module or system, uh, maybe even attached to the current one, where the spot checks can be run and we can uh, have information of, on how the system, uh, on how the, the, the member associations are implementing. Hello. Uh, perhaps to, to add a little, a little bit on this, uh, this audit is run by an independent company that, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, visits uh, each of the licensors. And um, as I was saying, it, it is very important because um, some national associations may wonder if the neighboring licensor is correctly implementing the system, mm -hmm. for example. How do we ensure that this happens? Well, this happens thanks to documents and regulations like the quality standard, like the one that you approve, that ensures that the system is harmonized across all the national associations. So mm -hmm. definitely a great step for, mm -hmm. for CAF to have implemented this, these regulations as well. Julio, we go to you, online platform. Uh, we know that we are aware uh, also through our communications that uh, Common Ball has the implementation of uh, Comet, uh, similar, same uh, partner, same provider as, uh, as CAF. Um, we know that you have a competition uh, module uh, and other modules. Just to expand a bit on, on this other um, uh, modules that, that the platform can, can give, give to us and how uh, important and a game changer has been because I've seen the other modules also in terms of 
competition management, uh, registration, um, um, and other 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 modules. So uh, you've been you've been utilizing it very well as Concacaf. Just to to take us through that. Oh yeah, we use uh, Analyticum Comet for all our competitions. We are now negotiating the platform for licensing, club licensing. And it's been really helpful, really helpful to have everything in one place. And we need to understand that there's nothing wrong with having papers, but in terms of, of being more agile, more practical, we need to move into, the, into systems and just upload everything in a, in a cloud and have everything there. And as, 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 as uh, AFC mentioned, I mean, we are... We are we're making it a lot faster to have all the documentation. All the information is up there. We just can look it up, and it's going to be very helpful. We need platforms. I think it's, it's, it's the only way out. And we are, we are looking forward to see if we can work out something with, with Comet. But with the competitions, we've been working them for almost, what, 11 years. Oh. And thanks to Conmebol, they were able to get into South America in a lot of, of association members. And now we're working with uh, with a club licensing platform, right? We're working if we get something done with them. Mm -hmm. Stephen, uh, I remember last year when uh, we invited, CAF invited all the, the confederations. We had a similar roundtable on Zoom, and uh, we've had a, a presentation last year on uh, on our platform and our plans. And immediately, you got in touch uh, with us to see. Uh, and to explore and to find out about the system and and uh, how it uh, it can also be implemented on your side, just to take us through how far are you in terms of in, in, meaning the the OFC uh, in terms of the implementation of, of of the system and what approach because as I said uh, every confederation has its peculiarities uh, Stephen already explained uh, the challenges that they have. Uh, the level of the national associations, the type of uh, entity that they are. So what, are, what is the approach that you, are, you, you intend to take or you are taking in terms of uh, establishing an on online platform for your competitions, for club licensing, etc.? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Sirat. I guess my response will come from a position of serving our member associations and ensuring that decisions that we do make around any new... Uh, systems or platforms are done with the best interests of the member associations that will ultimately be the ones using it. Um, in terms of Analyticom and Comet, we're very fortunate through the relationship that we actually utilize a large number of the modules um, already. We have done for, for a number of years. So our people within the member associations are actually very familiar with uh, the setup, with the look and the feel and the functionality uh, of uh, comet uh, as, a, as a system. But I, I think that any feelings of um, maybe anxiety or fear towards implementation, I mean, they're legitimate. You know, there, it is uh, a change that, that is required, but um, as we've seen over the years with, uh, with the help of Avitsa, we've been able to change and adapt and, and mold a lot of our online processes to uh, fit in with, with the system. I think from a club licensing uh, perspective with the system, again, if, if we are there to help and serve our member associations based on their needs, we will still need to retain an ability for some of those member associations uh, to complete any processes in a, manual pro uh, in a manual way, should that be the most effective. But what we are providing is an opportunity through the investment that we're putting into the system and the assistance that we will provide to encourage as many of them to come over as possible. Now that transition shouldn't be as scary as what it potentially could be if you're starting from scratch because, again, many of our administrators are already very familiar with how the system works uh, and, and some of the integrations uh, that it does have. So in terms of our, our progress, it's, it actually we're, we're progressing already from quite an advanced stage uh, given that many of our uh, users and super users uh, have been uh, familiar with the system for, for many years, and we're now this, there to help support them through the next step of club licensing, uh, allowing people to become familiar with some of the new processes, and you know, as it's been discussed, how this is also then 
um, socialized and utilized in the club, club land. I, I wouldn't underestimate the difficulty and the challenge of launching something uh, of this significance. Like, it's not easy. Like, there are so many components, thoughts, considerations, implications that are going to happen uh, thanks to a, a shift in the type of system that, that you do use. So I, I, I reiterate, I, I think your, your, uh, maybe your concerns or the areas that you think might be difficult, they're, they're certainly genuine and valid. Uh, but again, I, I also would like to offer comfort um, in that some of the support that is available to you through uh, your confederation uh, and a number of other uh, confederations and member associations will allow that step to become uh, maybe not as uncomfortable as maybe what people are feeling uh, uh, at the moment. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, you know, we are we're certainly progressing. We, we understand the, the value of this, uh, and we're excited to see the impact that this can not only have on administration, but the impact that this can have on the game and what people will see um, in our stadiums, what people will see in our leagues, uh, especially at the domestic level. And we are also aware that the success of uh, football at an international level is very dependent on the success of leagues within the domestic game. So if we can use club licensing and if we can use our online platform as one of the methods with club licensing, that will hopefully have an impact on the quality and the standard of play that ultimately uh, we all as football supporters uh, and observers want to see. So. I, uh, I certainly wouldn't underestimate the impact that this can have, not only on administration, uh, but also some of the sporting matters as well. What yes. you see. No, I you. want to, to highlight what you've said uh, in terms of uh, improving our uh, leagues and domestic competitions, because this is our, our next and final uh, main topic. Um, just to re recall, and we've mentioned this in, in the previous sessions, that CAF has invested in this system um, in a way that the system is uh, open. It's open, free of charge, to the member associations to utilize it in their domestic competitions. Men's, women's, regional competitions, uh, uh, provincial competitions, the system is fully utilized at no cost. It's fully manageable and in personalized at no cost for the CAF member associations. This is very important. Obviously, CAF has made it mandatory that for the CAF interclubs competitions, men's and women's, and every top tier competition in each of the member associations, it is mandatory that the process is done online. It's, the licensing process is concluded online. For the other uh, tiers, it's up to the federation to decide if they would like to use it. But the good thing is that the system is open and ready uh, for that case in, 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 in cases that the, the executive committee and the federation decide that we should apply um, the system also to the different competitions. So to wrap up the point number two, uh, which was related to the CAF club licensing online platform, I think we've, uh, we've gotten a very good understanding that uh, Online platforms are being implemented all over the world, either from a confederation um, standpoint, meaning from a confederation uh, being the active, um, the active uh, developer, if we can put it that way, or from the member associations themselves who um, decide to um, have their own um, uh, online platforms not only for club licensing, but also for competitions. Even here in our confederations, we have several of our associations who, who manage their own CMS, their own competition management system. They have their own internal developers or internal providers that, have, uh, that provide them their competition management system. But CAF also has the CMS, which is the CAF competition management system, which uh, some of the member associations and our zonal unions do uh, utilize it for their competition. So it's a similar approach. However, f on club licensing, uh, because CAF has been the first one to, 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 to come to the game, uh, we have decided to um, um, assist and implement 
the licensing uh, uh, system from a global uh, f uh, perspective, meaning that the system is CAF but open for all the member associations. Uh, so thank you very much for this, uh, for this contributions on the, as I said in the beginning, very contemporary topic. It's going to be the topic of uh, our discussions from now on. Uh, I've already uh, been approached for several people. Now it's no more about the regulations, it's only about the platform. I can't click this, I can't save that, but we'll, we'll surely get through, as the colleagues here mentioned, and I hope uh, uh, you have um, now, um, you are more positive in terms of uh, um, the implementation of, of, of the system. Our final, our third and final um, main uh, pillar of this uh, conversation, which uh, is, uh, okay, we have the regulations, we have the platform, uh, but all of this leads to the implementation of the system, implementation in the competitions. Because it's very easy for us to have, um, we have the, um, all the necessary tools and framework, but then when it comes to implementations, we are not really uh, following and we are not really uh, respecting um, uh, what we have set as our framework. So, uh, Andres, coming back to you, um, implementation of club licensing in um, competitions, men's and women's, from a, conti from a continental perspective, so inter-clubs competitions, but also for, from a domestic uh, perspective. Uh, what is FIFA's view? Uh, we know that FIFA, from the regulations that have been established, um, has set the general framework. Um, there are talks, obviously, to revamp or revise uh, also the framework from FIFA's side. So if you could take us through uh, the importance of uh, implementation uh, um, of uh, the system uh, in not only in continental competitions, but also domestic. So 2007-2008, yeah. so, I mentioned it earlier. Maybe it is time for a little refresh. So at FIFA we are discussing when uh, we, we're looking forward to, to a potential refresh very soon on the FIFA Club Licensing Regulations. Uh, in regards to implementation, I have to say, in my opinion, humans make the difference, 100%. So you have a legal framework in place, new regulations, you have a new platform in place, ready to go, and the humans will make the difference. So today you have a room full of excellent club licensing managers who are representing their countries and representing their clubs as well. And you are the ones that are going to make the difference. So today, the framework is set, the platform is ready, and now, together with FIFA and together with CAF, I know that you will turn around this whole system in the African continent. So we're really looking forward to working with you, to continue to work with you uh, on the women's club licensing space, as you were asking as well. We do have a specific support from FIFA side. At the moment, there are only two federations in all of CAF that are taking advantage of this uh, program. So I really encourage all of you to, to apply to the program. Uh, it's, it includes support from a uh, human perspective, but also specific funds that are available for you to use. So we really encourage you to apply to that program. We're working on it hand in hand with CAF. So with, we're working currently with Uganda, with Liberia, and we're doing that program directly uh, hand in hand, FIFA and CAF with the member associations. So hopefully more of you will, uh, will apply to that program. It's an excellent program, very easy to apply to. So we definitely encourage you to, to take advantage of that. But regarding to implementation, to your question at hand, I really think humans make the difference. So uh, as we go forward, please feel free, if you have any questions, any doubts about the new regulations, about the platform, feel free to contact CIDAT, feel free to contact us at FIFA. And now you have six new friends, five new friends from your different confederations uh, that are open and ready to help you. And uh, from what I hear from Christian, I think he's ready to come visit you <laughs> in your countries and, and tell you about the experience that they've had at CONCACAF with the platform. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to, uh, to this event being a turning point in club licensing in Africa. And we remain fully at your disposal at FIFA with Mark, with Medina, and our boss, uh, Ornella Bellia. So we're ready to help you, and we're very excited for the future. Thank you. Uh, Christian, um, yesterday we saw the CAF's new approach with uh, mandatory minimum requirements established now from a confederation perspective. 
uh, for, for implementation at minimum uh, top tier men's competition. For the women's, we have not uh, established uh, any minimum mandatory uh, domestic uh, requirements. So uh, we know at CONCACAF, uh, you also have your system and your, it's open for your member associations to utilize it uh, for domestic competitions. But how important do you see this approach that CAF has taken? Uh, and uh, there are similarities on, on your side also. And uh, for us to, to, to benchmark, uh, because we are just starting on this, for us to benchmark on your experience in regards to uh, requirements for domestic uh, competitions. Thank you, Sudat. That's a fantastic question. Uh, I see so much importance in, in the work that's being done here. And in particular with that requirement, I think it's essential to the development of all of the member associations in CAF. So understanding that these requirements are there to help develop, to help push the clubs to the next level. If all 54, I believe 54, correct? Correct. If all 54 can comply with the requirements and uphold those minimum standards within your domestic leagues, that will play a, a great part in pushing all the member associations to the next level. I know from our perspective, it's something that we dream of, in a, hopefully in the near future. We do have uh, some differences, like I mentioned earlier, with member associations in CONCACAF. I believe we have the lowest GDP in the world and the highest GDP within the same confederation. So it makes it a little bit of a challenge uh, requiring certain things, but we always aim to push our member associations to aspire for more to find ways to adapt the requirements within, within our confederation, our regulations, and our member associations to, to keep pushing them to see how we can keep developing them. I think uh, our colleagues also mentioned capacity building. We don't want to just require member associations and clubs to have things. We want to help those people succeed. So if we ask for certain positions, we want to put in, in place development programs to assure that they have the best skill set the best education, the best practices around the region. So I think the fact that you're aligning that throughout the continent is going to be of huge importance, not only to their local product at, within their local leagues, but to the Champions League at the CAF level, the Confederations Cup. I think that will really push the tournament to the next level, and you'll, you'll really see the results if you start putting those practices in place at the domestic leagues. I have one question to finalize, which goes for Pavel, Julio, and Steven. Uh, obviously, we'll go through the experience of, uh, of each confederation. It's, re it's in relation to the um, implementation of the regulations on uh, the men's competitions, but now, as we launched also from our side, uh, mm -hmm. the CAF women's club license regulations. We know that some of the confederations are also uh, in the process or have taken this, this step. So uh, just starting from the AFC, Pavel, uh, from the women's game, uh, the AFC has now a women's uh, co dedicated competition. If I'm not mistaken, it pi was in a pilot, pilot phase, a pilot project. So how, uh, how has that been? And uh, um, are, what, in terms of the implementation of the requirements, uh, are they similar to CAF? Or, or is a totally different approach? Okay, yes. As you correctly mentioned, also we starting, I would say, with uh, okay. women's club competitions. It's not yet Champions League as what CAF went to the extra mile, right? Uh, we are still doing the uh, pilot invitational tournaments. We started 2019 for women's club, and then we are going to, let's say, from the uh, high rank member associations in terms of the women's football. We go deeply to, to, to check, to, let's say, knock their door and to, to deliver the message what we discussed just now, right, about the importance of uh, club licensing as a system and the development tool for, uh, for football, like uh, development in different uh, member associations. So, but we, we are not only to continue with women's, we also went extra mile for futsal club licensing. So now we have three systems which are uh, going to be in full force from 2024-25 season. Okay. So it's not only for women's but also futsal. 
as what uh, probably you know, we have uh, futsal club championship uh, in uh, AFC. Uh, so access to the, this competition will be also through the uh, club licensing system for futsal clubs. So this is what also we try to implement. Futsal. Futsal. Yes. Okay. So we are like we have three systems, and it will be in full force, like I said, in a few upcoming years. And for as we, as you said, for the women's football, it's still in the pilot uh, pilot status. But of course, we look forward to to get it to the same level as uh, men's game. Interesting. Uh, uh, maybe we should uh, also start thinking about uh, club li- futsal club license regulations, right? Uh, I see some heads uh, in doubt. Uh, then we go to beach soccer, maybe. Okay, no, that's very interesting. Uh, futsal, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a sport that, uh, it's, uh, personally speaking, we, uh, I, I played when I was... Uh, very little and uh, I have a good passion for it. We have the zonal union directors here and uh, some of the zones are organizing already, planning to organize futsal qualifiers, etc. So it's, it's, a, it's a, maybe we can, we can think of um, not a club licensing regulations, but uh, a standard document where uh, teams or national teams can, can utilize to, to participate in, in the specific competitions. Uh, same question to you, Julio. Uh, implementation of uh, regulations uh, in the men's competitions and also in your women's competitions uh, specifically. No. Yeah, we started with the women's club licensing two years ago. Thanks, I think FIFA also helped out. We we wrote it down in 2020. This is going to be our second year, and we are requirement, the same requirements you have, and we're full implementation, and we have 16 teams, well. and I think the most important part of the women's club licensing is the, is the thing that we need to have equality, right, in terms of women's football, so I think that's important to help them organize, and to not to impose again, but to, to have the tool to make sure that the, the member associations work correctly to develop women's football. That's what I think about women's. Thank you. Stephen, on Oceania. (laughs) First of all, a quick plug. We do have the uh, co-hosting of the FIFA Women's World Cup, uh, which we'll be hosting uh, with our friends in Australia next year as well. So um, for us, uh, this is a a really important uh, topic uh, and something which uh, we put uh, an equal amount of emphasis uh, on as uh, many of the other games. And Certainly with my role, my role is equally split across uh, men's and women's football. Uh, I also work very closely with our incredible colleagues in the women's football division. Uh, and also very envious of the competition that you just held here uh, in Africa as well with the Women's Cup of Nations. Uh, kudos to you all on, on a successful tournament. Um, in terms of, uh, from a regulatory perspective, uh, OFC um, as a confederation uh, have a stance of providing a general club licensing regulations which will fit across both. However, we encourage our member associations uh, to tailor those uh, club license regulations uh, to fit the form of the game where they, where they see appropriate. And we've seen some excellent examples where some member associations choose to have their club license regulations across both men's and women's football. And then we also have uh, some of our member associations um, who choose to have uh, separate and it's interesting that it's not always the men's club licensing regulations that are the higher. Uh, in some cases, uh, the women's regulations are higher. Uh, that's due po- uh, mainly down to the popularity of, of the sport within, uh, within our region. Uh, football or soccer is, is not the number one sport in every member association or associate member. Um, so again, it's up to each member association uh, to determine the levels of their regulations based on local context and local culture. And the way in which they do that is through uh, understanding the clubs that they are working with. And I think before you establish any club licensing regulations, uh, you have to understand the reality of the clubs that you're you're working in, and you build your regulations based on that understanding. So when it comes to women's regulations, um, they are in some cases more ambitious um, and higher than they are in, in the men's game. And what that will allow us to do is to launch the OFC Women's Champions League. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll be uh, witnessing the same scenes 
uh, as, uh, as I certainly did uh, here in Africa uh, a, few, uh, a few weeks ago. So, um, yeah, we're, we're very hopeful. But the, the importance that we place on, on club licensing, um, we recognize the difference. I think it's important to recognize the difference. Um, however, we also feel a responsibility to ensure that um, we give as much needed attention to each of those uh, genders or sexes as, as what's, uh, what's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, be, be, uh, because we don't have uh, such esteemed uh, representatives from uh, the different confederations every day, I think it's a good moment now uh, to take uh, a few uh, questions in case uh, uh, there are from our member associations, from our zonal unions. Um, some questions, comments to the topics that we have addressed uh, here. We kindly ask the operational team to assist in case of uh, um, any comments. We would like you to present yourself, your name, your, your, and, your and your national association. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Leonardo. I came from the beautiful islands of Cape Verde, so welcome to see you there whenever you want to visit me. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, I would like, really like to congratulate the, everybody that is making an effort to organize this event in here. It's being uh, very good. I've been participating all around the world in uh, these type of events and seminars, but this is a high class for the people that are working on the backstage. Congratulations. Uh, see that you are uh, really, uh, I meant to congratulate. Everything is running smooth and perfectly. So, uh, hey, a round of applause for everyone. So. Thank you for the hospitality. So I'll, I'll cut to the chase. So uh, I've listened to the word opportunity along, uh, several times here. Opportunity, opportunity, this is an opportunity. So I agree with that, that statement. First of all, because we have the opportunity, that is, the opportunity to make a leapfrog. The leapfrog is to see what other people already have made uh, with this platform and what advantages and learning experiences, knowledge ex exchange we can do associated with this, um, this platform. Actually, uh, I consider it to be a game changer. That's it. It's a new step. It's a milestone on the pathway of CAF and uh, the member associations. But I'm really interested in seeing the experience of the other confederations had dealing with this platform. I'm really focused on an area that is sports for development. Actually, I was really glad uh, to see that uh, on the regulation side, it's important to have a women's team, also safeguarding policies, and uh, I saw also uh, some ventures alongside on that pathway. Um, and I, I truly believe that it's really important for the ecosystem to be safe for, uh, and, and that's it. The, the professional sport is being a pivot for this to happen. What is, and I would like for your comments on this, what is your experience on using this platform as a relay for development programs as a root, re, grassroots uh, level for the, the teams that were engaged Chris, on it? give it to you. Yeah, and uh, um, I'm, I'm, with, I'm, I'm thinking what uh, Sida okay. just talking, you know, women and sports participation, sports clubs, it's, it's, I think this is really important for us to engage because the opportunities are there as well. But I have a different question. I'm thinking 10 years ahead. So let's go to 2032. Uh, I think this is an opportunity for another part. This is the complying with the uh, sustainable, sustainable development goals. The, pay, the, the role that sports and football has on communal and societal impact. One thing that is really important, and I have traveled all the world, Africa has a lot of, a lot of things to, to teach the world, actually. It's, it's something that we need to, to preserve and on the family, community side. And I see this platform for a, a baseline for building up consortium transnational programs. So this, this is a continental platform, so it's possible for us to receive information based on Cape Verde or our friends on the other part from Mauritius or Seychelles, it will be very far away, but it's possible for us to contact, contact this. And these based development programs 
If you have any experience on your confederations on using this as a platform for contacting other partners, uh, mainly with development agencies, I'm talking about UN, IOC, European Union. I'm, I'm really keen on making the effort of connecting not only sports associations, uh, mainly football, but also development agencies. I think this, this platform would be really powerful to do that. Is this in your perspective as a strategic vision on your confederations to use this platform for this point of view? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was too long, but uh, I will thank I you will very much. That, uh, Christian, the, I, think, I think we take the, the first part uh, with regards to, and, and you've, you've mentioned a bit in, your, in one of the points, uh, yeah. how do you, how CONCACAF utilizes the platforms very well in terms of uh, uh, clubs, uh, youth development, and uh, in you, not only applying into the senior competition. So yeah. I think, Christian, you would be the, the right person to take that one. Uh, that's a great question. I, I, I hope I catch it because it was a little long, <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's a great opportunity. We do have a, uh, a pillar which is still in the works of social responsibility. We're trying to work on new, new criteria for, for clubs to really connect with the communities. We think that's a, that's a great opportunity, like you mentioned. Uh, when we have smaller MAs, it, it really just means that much more when you're connecting and you're getting people involved with your club. We did have an incentive program that was being run by CONCACAF. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, it's, it's being put in pause, but we did reward clubs that were doing work around social responsibility, community-driven dri community events, so I think it's a great opportunity when you look at yourselves as member associations and maybe see the realities, maybe see some of the connections that can be made with the clubs. Maybe, maybe in the long run it can help you know, increase awareness about the club, awareness about different important topics that you as a, fem a federation or you as clubs think are important to, to shine light upon. I know for us it's, it's definitely always a central, a central focus. So we, we do work uh, with with the youth around our region, making sure that they have the right opportunities, the right education. I know in, in women's football and youth, education is, a, is a great, of great importance to us. Safeguarding is something that's really been a, a focal point uh, of our last 24 months, I would say, and it's something that we're developing into our new set of regulations. So, I mean, the opportunity is there. It's definitely something that we have to connect with all the clubs because the importance of them giving back to their communities and being important aspects of their of their local environments is something that can be measured. So I think it's a great opportunity. It's a great initiative. It's not something that us as a confederation can dictate to every member association because the realities are a bit different everywhere. So just taking what you know, understanding that connection you have you have with the clubs, and maybe maybe working towards a, a set objective to reach to different communities, to work with different groups, to provide education, to work with, like you, like you mentioned, UN, different safeguarding agencies, different educational partners. There's always something there that can really be taken to, to provide more support, more, more programs for clubs and local communities. I think Stephen wants to, to add something. Uh, around, uh, around your comments and the development of uh, social responsibility as part of our responsibility uh, in our region. Now, first of all, I, I don't think that um, it being in club re licensing regulations should be the reason that you choose to go in that direction. And I'm certainly fortunate to be in a region where uh, sport for development uh, is a big focus. Um, we uh, are a part of the world where we have uh, varying levels of um, health, sanitation levels, uh, domestic violence against women, uh, a number of other uh, societal issues which are really uh, prominent uh, in, in some of our regions. Uh, I'm also fortunate to have a general secretary uh, that used to be the head of social responsibility uh, within our organization and has been able to develop um, a very credible and, and responsible social um, responsibility uh, department who, through club licensing, uh, we're also working with to ensure that uh, there are elements of social responsibility linked to the uh, sustainable development goals uh, at least referenced uh, in some of the advices or regulations uh, that we do provide. 
what we're finding is that then attracts uh, different sponsors. It attracts different partners. Um, I've just been in Fiji to support the OFC Women's Nations Cup. And we had partners such as UNICEF uh, and the UN uh, and a number of other uh, credible global organizations uh, that were choosing to partner with us because of our commitment to social responsibility. So I, I think it's an excellent um, start uh, for the Confederation to have that conversation with the member associations. Uh, but if I was a member association, I, I, I've, I don't feel like I should need to wait for the Confederation. I can start to put those things in place already as well. So I, I think it's great that you're, you're thinking about that. And if club licensing can be another reason to support some of that work, again, it just adds to uh, the impact that, that this initiative can make. Okay, I think we can take uh, two more questions. We've seen the Isa Yamfore from Niger, and then we take one more. First, Isa. Oops. Yeah, take it with me. Take you to take the next two. <laughs> I thought you said, said Stephen. Five minutes. Bien, bonjour. Un peu, un peu proche. Oui. Okay. Uh, Le panel a, a été très riche. Nous avons beaucoup appris avec vous, à vous écouter. Et ça a été très enrichissant. Beaucoup de choses sont revenues. Je vous félicite. Et nous avons écouté toutes les expériences des uns et des autres. Et beaucoup de, 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 de mots sont revenus, notamment Sylvain qui dit que la plateforme est là. Les règlements sont là, il faut les mettre en application. Et Andrea, pour Andrea, le, la clé de la réussite réside dans l'humain. N'est-ce pas Et le représentant de l'AFC, avec beaucoup d'humilité d'ailleurs, disait que c'est les échanges, approcher les gens, chercher leurs besoins, connaître leurs besoins et mettre en application. Et c'est ça qui fait la clé de la réussite. Pour nous, La plateforme est là, l'humain est là, parce que dans cette salle, nous avons des gens que nous avons côtoyés depuis plus de dix ans autour de cette question de l'essence de plomb. Depuis Arras jusqu'à aujourd'hui, nous avons suivi beaucoup de propositions. La plateforme est là, la formation, et les capacités ont été fortement renforcées. Nous avons beaucoup appris, nous continuons à apprendre. Et Mais il faut aussi l'humain, la, la clé de la réussite repose sur l'humain. Il faut sa disponibilité, cet humain. Et à un moment donné, la CAF avait développé une stratégie avec les directeurs de les directeurs de, de l'éducation. On a mis ça à l'écart, on a dit, bon, non, on va faire les managers de club. Et que ces directeurs de l'éducation, ils bénéficiaient d'une indemnité. Des indemnités que à un moment donné on avait prévu de reverser au, ma au manager de club, au manager des licences de club. Ça n'a pas été fait. Et euh, au moment du passage, euh, on a augmenté, on a bonifié <coughs> la subvention des fédérations. La CAF a bonifié par deux, elle a multiplié par deux la subvention, au, la subvention au, au, à nos fédérations. Okay. Et il était prévu que euh, Sur, ces, sur cette augmentation, au moins 20% soit consacré à chaque fédération à la mise en œuvre de la licence des clubs. Et que cela devait se débattre en Assemblée générale de la CAP. À cette date rien. On, a, on est là depuis 15 ans, 10 ans. On attend. On vient, on apprend, on s'en va, on retourne. Et de plus en plus, des responsabilités dans les attributions des managers de licence augmentent. Aujourd'hui, ça se multiplie. Il faut être très disponible, il faut être à notre place pour savoir ce que nous vivons avec nos clubs. De la même manière que vous vous déployez à nous former, c'est comme ça que nous travaillons jour et nuit, très souvent, euh, au détriment de nos, de nos vies sociales, avec les gens. Mais est-ce que euh, 
la seule, le, la seule formation, les séminaires, les ateliers, les règlements suffisent à la mise en œuvre si, euh, quelque part, euh, la question de l'apport, l'apport indemnitaire ou autre, tout ça ne, ne suit pas. Voilà la question. La question est que euh, on n'est pas soutenu. Ni dans la mise en œuvre avec nos fédérations, elles n'arrivent pas à débloquer les, les moyens qu'il faut, puisque la CAF a multiplié par deux les indemnités, ah, la subvention pour les, pour les fédérations. De cela devait être prélevé 20%, ça devait être une décision du comité exécutif, ça n'a jamais été débattu. On devait affecter les indemnités qui étaient pour les directeurs de l'éducation aux managers, ça n'a jamais été fait. Je pensais que de cette manière, Bon, je, 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 voilà. je vais prendre moi-même voilà. la question, voilà. comme c'est une question. Voilà, pour... votre décharge, vous, vous n'étiez pas là. Oui. Euh... Voilà. <rire> Maintenant, bon. il faut que vous euh... examiniez cela. Ça, c'est un point important. Euh, donc, le système euh, peut réussir seulement avec un une support euh, de leadership euh, de, de chaque fédération. Et c'est ça que nous essayons toujours de le faire. Euh, comme la CAF, de, de communiquer avec les, les, les fédérations pour leur dire qu'il faut euh, supporter aussi euh, les programmes de, système, de, de licence de club à la fédération. Parce que, par exemple, les, les, les managers, ils doivent voyager pour faire des inspections. C'est avec quel budget Donc c'est au comité exécutif, c'est à la fédération d'assister, de, de, de comme ils font avec d'autres programmes, avec... Euh, euh, le football féminin, etc. etc. Donc, euh, mais il faut aussi dire que dans les nouveaux règlements, comme nous avons été aussi préoccupés avec euh, les supports et la, 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 la dédication qu'il faut euh, que l'administration euh, a sur les, systèmes, les, 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 les départements, on peut dire, des de, de licences de club, nous avons inclus dans, dans les, les règlements. Euh, dans le règlement, euh, on dit euh, provision générale, on a inclus euh, des euh, euh, articles spécif spécifiques de comment l'administration de licence de club dans chaque fédération doit être composée. Euh, on a inclus euh, euh, aussi dans les documents de standards de qualité. Euh, c'est pour ça que c'est très important avec les documents standard de qualité la première chose que vous devez faire quand vous, vous êtes euh, revenu dans votre pays c'est de prendre ces documents et, euh, et, et partager avec les comités exécutifs, avec, avec les présidents pour leur dire voilà c'est ça le système de, de droit de licence de club pour fonctionner à 100% il faut nous comme valeur de licence il faut qu'on mette en place toutes les conditions mentionnées dans le document standard de qualité. Il, il, il a, on a intégré les supports. Aussi, on a indiqué, on a indiqué une provision qui le comité exécutif, par exemple, doit indiquer dans ses membres une, une personne euh, respons, dédiée, responsable au système d'octroi de licence de club. Nous avons normalement quelqu'un pour l'administration, pour les finances, dans le comité exécutif, mais une personne pour pour euh, accompagner les processus et pour donner le soup, quelques supports euh, euh, et communiquer euh, en tant qu'administration avec la, la partie, euh, la partie euh, euh, politique de la fédération. Mais c'est un point, un, point, un, un point totalement bien noté que pour euh, les systèmes, il faut, on a, on a les règlements, on a la plateforme, mais il faut avoir le support aussi, euh, les matériaux, euh, les ressources humaines, financières pour, euh, pour euh, réussir. Euh, nous, on va avoir une troisième question. Euh, je sais qu'il y a d'autres. Euh, euh, je vois euh, troisième et dernière question. Après, les, les gens sont là. On, on continue euh, parce que nous sommes en, en temps aussi de, 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 de pause. Euh, avant de ça, mon, mon collègue Andrés, il, il veut un commentaire. Prends, pardon, Andrés, comme je suis en face de la... Oui, oui. Avec, euh, pas de problème, Sidat. Merci pour la question. C'est une très bonne question. Hein? 
me, il a bien con, euh, répondu. My friend Leandro, I'm ready to come to Cap Vert. <laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, I wanted to do two, two items for your question very quickly. Uh, you mentioned the word opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. The club licensing system can really be that engine that works around all of those opportunities. Your, your, uh, your countryman, Mr. Gerson, is now in CAF. He's working on football for schools. How can Cap Verde link football for schools program with club licensing? Because your clubs are in a particular scenario in your country. How can that program be linked back to club licensing? I think there's many opportunities there. And all of those, mentioning, all of those items you mentioned, how can we put them into the engine of club licensing? We, cannot, we don't have to limit ourselves to coaching education, youth teams, uh, quality of personnel administration. We can really explore other items uh, to link into that engine of club licensing. And then the second point I really wanted to bring to attention, uh, the topic of safeguarding, because you're 100% correct in this item. Uh, player welfare, safeguarding, is, it has to climb into the ladder of importance throughout the football industry. And I wanted to mention one specific case, uh, our friends in Jordan, at the Jordan FA, uh, they've done a great job in taking advantage of the FIFA Women's Club Licensing Program using the $25,000 to hire a safeguarding officer inside the JFA, the Jordan Football Association. And this individual is supporting all of the clubs within club licensing with a requirement. So there's a requirement, which is you have to have a safeguarding officer and a safeguarding policy inside your football club. But of course, that's great to make such a requirement. But from the federation side, they've appointed a safeguarding officer who is now going to be supporting all of the clubs in establishing these items and also monitoring the success of that program. So just wanted to link those two because I think it's super important. Thank you, Sidat. We have one question from uh just to move into the zonal unions to give them opportunity, Mr. Mahmoud Hamami. Je vous demande une question directe aux invités. Et bref, comme je vous connaissais. Oui, c'est vrai. Vous allez m'empêcher de faire un petit commentaire pour vous remercier d'avoir réuni cette grande famille du football. Mais j'ai compris que le football se modernise, le football se standardise. Aujourd'hui, vous dites que le football se digitalise, mais pour les représentants des associations nationales, il, y a, il faut qu'ils se modernisent. Ça, c'est important. Mais la question, euh, il faut quand même faire une petite évaluation. Combien de cas dans les différents continents, le cas de demande de clubs, ont été euh, rejetés par les, euh, les instances de premier appel Et quelles sont les causes par rapport aux différents critères Est-ce que c'est les critères liés à l'infrastructure Est-ce que c'est les critères liés à, à, au, au côté financier ou au côté juridique C'est yeah. très oh. important de connaître oh, les disparités des différents continents. Bon, j'ai un petit commentaire personnel pour l'AFC. Je la remercie pour avoir accéléré le, le rythme. On ne va pas lui demander de, de ralentir le rythme, mais je vais yeah. demander à nos continents d'accélérer le rythme pour intégrer le futsal et intégrer peut-être d'autres sports. Merci. OK. Euh, merci, merci beaucoup pour votre commentaire. Je vais faire la traduction un peu. Bref, bref. Uh, so, excellent question uh, from, uh, from our friend. So, aside from congratulating everyone for, for giving so, such an open um, remarks, he would like to ask a very specific question to you all. In regards to licenses that are being rejected in your different regions. What are the causes primarily for clubs not being able to achieve a, uh, a license in the club licensing process? I think that one, Pavel, uh, Pavel? the AFC, uh, that one would be good for AFC. Yeah. <laughs> the most important is overdue payables, I think. Overdue payables. For Don't. biggest club, for bigger club, you know. When they have infrastructure, they have access to, to everything, whatever is required by uh, club licensing regulations, requirements also, right? But in the end of the day, they, they didn't really do their finance right, and which leads to overdue payables. This is, I think, for biggest clubs, yes. For smaller clubs, maybe different uh, challenges, but yeah, like specific questions, specific answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I assume that uh, there are still many questions, but as I said, our guests are still here with us. Uh, feel free to approach them. Uh, all of them are, 
are friends of Africa, friends of CAF, uh, and always open to, to assist and cooperate, us, cooperate with us. So uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of the CAF administration and our uh, executive committee. Thank you very much to the different uh, confederations for accepting uh, our invitation uh, and uh, being with us uh, here. We were supposed to have a few more guests, but due to uh, issues uh, with flights, issues with uh, final um, last-minute situations, we could have, but at least all the confederations are here represented, at least with one person. Very happy for that, uh, which uh, shows that uh, the way forward uh, is on, about, it's on, it's on cooperation, it's on uh, mutual, um, mutual communication and uh, sharing of expertise. Uh, we have uh, f several things in common. It seems that uh, we are not uh, um, placed in, uh, in uh, different contexts. We have several things in common. We have several uh, things in, uh, that are unique to us. So let us uh, utilize uh, what we have in common and explore uh, the experiences that um, that we can uh, we can take one of the challenges that I would uh, um, that I would like to uh, or the opportunities that I, we could we could also take and FIFA is here representative is is that we should now think of engaging member associations from uh, from CAF with uh, with member associations from Asia on club licensing. Uh, and vice versa from the different confederations. We have maybe similar, um, uh, some federations that are at the same level. We have, for example, Uganda that does a fantastic job uh, on, on club licensing. And we have, for example, Malaysia that does a fantastic job in club licensing. And in futsal, I know very well. So, for example, if you have a, 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 an MA that is strong in futsal, that would like to have a club license regulation in futsal, it's, I think it's our role as uh, confederations, as FIFA, to bring, this, uh, pr to bring them together and to, uh, to reduce the, the boundaries and the barriers because all of this is created by, by us, the humans. So, uh, once again, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I think we can con con consider the session uh, closed. Thank you. Take a photo.